earlier uh, with the chemis chemistry industry uh, of Canada, Mr. Masterson, and you've been here before. Uh, go ahead, Bob, floor is yours. Thank you, Mr. Chair and members of the committee. Nice to see many of you again. It is a privilege to appear before you again in these unprecedented circumstances. And before I do begin, on behalf of our industry, I want to acknowledge and thank Parliament for its work to support Canadians and Canadian businesses as they cope with the impacts of COVID-19 on their health and economic well-being. I also want to give a brief uh, shout out to the committee staff uh, for their patience, their uh, professionalism and their proficiency in these challenging circumstances that uh, most of us aren't used to when we come to committee. Thank you. While well, ready to discuss tonight the impacts of COVID on Canada's chemistry and plastics industries, I would like to take the opportunity more to focus on the future and what this committee and Parliament can and must do to ensure robust and timely economic recovery. Uh, that recovery must be premised on investment attraction. And we know COVID has put a strong pause on new investments in our sector and other sectors of the economy, but we have to remember that Canada's investment outlook was very troubling even before COVID. And this was very well highlighted by the Barton Advisory Council, as well as, uh, as continues to be well articulated by the Business Council of Canada and the Canadian Chamber of Commerce and others. We would urge you as the committee to reflect again on the analysis and recommendations that have come from those groups in the past. And I welcome the opportunity to speak on, on this in more detail during the questions. Concerning the chemistry and plastics sector in particular, I offer a few observations before turning to our brief recommendations. First, Demand in key Asian countries has already rebounded to pre-COVID levels. Inventories are at their lowest levels in a decade, and despite COVID, there's a return to record global volumes of chemistry and plastics production. And while experiencing short pause due to COVID, this $4 trillion global industry looks ready to return to its normal, robust, multi-decade rates of expansion, which amount to nearly 1.5 times global GDP each year, as it has done for nearly seven decades. Second, as you've heard me say many times before, Canada's chemistry and plastic sector holds many advantages. And with the right regulatory and investment conditions, we could better and fully participate in the global expansion of the industry and continue contribute to Canada's economic recovery. Moreover, key provinces, including Quebec, Ontario, Alberta, and British Columbia, have all identified and prioritized the opportunities for investment and growth in the chemistry and or plastic sectors. Despite the interest and activities of the province, however, the desired chemistry investments are less likely to occur without increased engagement and improved investment conditions with the realm, within the realm of federal responsibilities. We know that Canada's chemistry and plastics investments will make our economy more resilient, more innovative, and provide the critical building blocks for the low carbon economy. We know there's a huge opportunity to provide the building blocks for a truly circular economy for plastic waste, and my brief recommendations today reflect those opportunities. First, we recommend the committee consider extending the full 100% accelerated capital cost allowance that was introduced in the uh, 2018 fall economic statement, and with no phase out to 2030, and specifically making it permanent. This will send a signal to companies that have deferred projects because of COVID, or to global investors that are contemplating new investments into response to the provincial uh, uh, interest that Canada is indeed open for business and respects the timelines, the lengthy timelines for major capital investments of projects of $10 billion and more. Second, we recommend the committee uh, recommend establishing a plastic technology innovation fund with an initial allocation of $200 million. This will further research and development in circular economy technology applications across Canada. And a focused initiative like this at scale will send a signal that Canada intends to be a leader in the development of advanced recycling technologies. This timing of this initiative in 2021 could be the cornerstone of Canada's hosting of the World Circular Economy Forum. Finally, Mr. Chair, we recommend that as we emerge from COVID-19 pandemic, all parliamentarians commit to an overall review of the business tax and taxation, business taxation and regulation regime in Canada. Building back better, simply put, requires investment into Canada, and it's critical that our tax and regulatory codes be optimized to attract investment and innovation in the 21st century. I look forward to your questions on these and any other matters. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Masterson, and uh, also thank you for your brief. With the environment,